We were due to hear from Verengai, who unfortunately fell ill, but being a very good uh, leader or CEO, he has sent his lead developer and lawyer in his place. Um, so I'd like to welcome Tawanda Kembo and Simba Masharidza from Zimbabwe. Uh, hello, world. My name is not Verengai Mabika, as in the program. I'm Tawanda Kembo. Uh, Verengai couldn't make it here. So uh, I'm from Bit Finance, and uh, th that is our um, uh, K K fancy tagline there. But we're a company which just makes it super easy to buy or sell Bitcoin in Zimbabwe. So uh, I was invited to speak on the topic, the future of innovation using Bitcoin and the blockchain in Africa and globally. Uh, and thank you for that, Sonia. Uh, but, but really, we made a decision as a company to focus on the currency aspects of this technology. So we uh, changed the presentation a bit. Uh, and we are just in Zimbabwe right now. We don't have a lot of experience uh, globally. So uh, we also ended up changing the presentation a bit. Uh, and because Africa is not a country, of course, uh, we changed it a bit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we strongly believe uh, Zimbabwe is a good use case for what can work around Africa. Because most of Africa really looks and uh, works like Zimbabwe today. So uh, in the end, we ended up with this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share some experiences from, uh, uh, from the experience we had running a Bitcoin exchange in Zimbabwe and uh, where we think the technology is going to go in Zimbabwe uh, and in Africa. But uh, before I get into my presentation, uh, this is a picture from, uh, from five years ago, and I decided to put this on uh, because sometime last year when we pitched Bitfinance to an investor, they, uh, very, uh, they were very honest and upfront with us, and they didn't want to put in money because they uh, didn't think Zimbabwe was a good country. Uh, his reason was you don't even have a currency of your own. And so uh, we went on to explain that uh, uh, the reason why we don't have a currency of our own uh, makes us a perfect use case for Bitcoin. Uh, we have nine currencies which are legal tender in Zimbabwe. So you can, uh, you can actually buy stuff in US dollars and get your change in South African rands and Botswana Pula. Or you can walk in any supermarket with the Chinese yen and uh, they're supposed to accept it because it's legal tender. But, uh, uh, and this is a picture from five years ago when uh, around the time Shop started uh, telling people that we don't accept uh, the Zimbabwean dollar, you'll see the tool says uh, we accept US dollars only. And uh, uh, I remember it, I was in college at the time around 2009, and it, it is very worst in, um, uh, when you'd walk in a bar and you wanted to buy uh, beers. Let's say, for example, you have enough money to buy six beers. It made more sense to buy all six beers uh, and carry them to your table, because every time you'd go to the counter, the price would go up. So infl inflation, uh, inflation was that crazy. And I have a, uh, I have a few pictures to show that uh, uh, at one point, we were starving billionaires. Uh, uh, the prices kept going up. Uh, the central bank ended up removing nine zeros from, uh, uh, from the currency. And we're still quadrillionaires, so we had quadrillions in our bank accounts, and uh, I was still a cash trapped student at the time. Uh, buy three eggs for $100 billion. Uh, and this was after nine zeros were, were removed. You could buy three pairs for $50 trillion. We had, we had a 100, $100 trillion note at one point. Um, and uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so shops, uh, businesses, merchants just stopped accepting the Zimbabwean dollar and, um, uh, and we moved on to, to the US dollar. So we came uh, about four or five years later, we went, started to start a Bitcoin company because we also strongly believed that Bitcoin would make a good uh, alternative currency. So. Uh, and now I'm going to get into the trends we, uh, we can expect to see. So uh, first, based on our experience running a Bitcoin exchange, uh, we've been growing slowly since going live on September 16 last year. And we can uh, expect to see increased adoption of Bitcoin, uh, not just in Zimbabwe, but, uh, uh, but in Africa. 
uh, what's interesting is we're starting to see a lot of normal people getting into Bitcoin. So it's no longer just geeks and hackers and, uh, and uh, people like me. Uh, and, and this is because uh, we're starting to see more and more apps which makes it easier to use Bitcoin. I, uh, my grandmother is now on WhatsApp, by the way. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's give her a hand. <laughs> but I had a hard time explaining to her that now that she's on WhatsApp, she's actually now using the internet. So uh, she didn't believe it at first. But I guess the point I'm trying to bring across is that uh, we now have apps which makes it so much easier to use the internet without having to know what it is. And we are going to start to see that uh, with Bitcoin. Uh, one of the reasons we're going to see increased adoption is uh, we're getting more and more cell phones. Uh, so so uh, mobile penetration rate is going up. Uh, a lot more people are using mobile money. And uh, our exchange, BitcoinFundy.com, allows you to buy Bitcoin using mobile money. So you can uh, basically buy Bitcoin instantly instead of waiting three days for your bank transfer to go through. Um, mobile penetration rate is going up. You don't really need a bank account if you're in Zimbabwe. And in many parts of Africa, you don't need a bank account. Uh, we, you can now find a mobile money agent in every street corner in Zimbabwe. Uh, interpen internet penetration rate is going up uh, about almost half the population is now connected to the internet. I wish I could find a, a statistic for how many adults are now connected to the internet. Uh, we are starting to see more startups, uh, and, and the reason being that we now have the infrastructure, uh, which makes it easier to, uh, to start building uh, Bitcoin startups, uh, apps solving uh, stuff such as uh, remittances are now possible and easier. It's now easier to build a remittances app using Bitcoin as the rails, because we now have Bitcoin exchanges. Uh, in Zimbabwe and in certain parts of Africa, and we're going to see these come to more countries. Um, we are one interesting use case we are seeing being built on top of our exchange by uh, a third party is using Internet of Things uh, and Bitcoin to solve a real problem. And, uh, and let me give an example. Let's say you uh, let's say you want to install a you want to buy a solar plant and you are middle-income family, but you can't afford to buy the whole thing. Uh, here is how you could solve that uh, f for the supplier whose market can't afford to buy their product because it's too expensive. And for the person who wants to buy, uh, you could have an app, uh, uh, you could have a device uh, which accepts maybe uh, Bitcoin as a form of payment, and you only pay just before you use the device. So you're kind of like renting to buy, and we, are, uh, we have one company which is building similar applications uh, on top of our exchange. Uh, one other huge trend is uh, we're starting to see more venture capital uh, getting into Africa and uh, corporate money and NGO money funding Bitcoin startups. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is also very good for the ecosystem. Uh, we predict that talent is going to be harder to find uh, I know talent is hard to find anywhere in the world, but it's most difficult here in Africa. And I wish I could come up with a solution now, but uh, it's something we're struggling with as a company as well. So uh, perhaps one solution may be to work together as an industry to um, find out how we can solve this problem. Uh, maybe we can borrow from other industries, maybe have a certification, uh, something like what chartered accountants do in the accounting industry. But I predict that talent is going to continue to be more difficult to find as we, uh, in, in the next few years. Uh, and it's one thing to just have developers, but uh, the other challenge is having developers who understand Bitcoin very well. So those are um, uh, very few, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my last prediction is going to be that we are going to see the block size we're going to solve the block size debate in the next uh, uh, in the next few months. So, to those who don't know, uh, we have two broad groups of people who don't uh, who can't reach into an agreement on how or, or, or if they should increase the size of the uh, increase the block size. So, uh, one argument says that 
if we increase the block size, we cause more centralization, fewer people can run nodes. And we have, we have a lot of evidence. Uh, as the block size has grown over the years, we have had fewer Bitcoin nodes. Uh, and the other group says that uh, increasing the block size makes Bitcoin more scalability. And people can't seem to reach an agreement on how we're going to solve this. I think one way we're going to do this is um, uh, multiple Bitcoin implementations, uh, but we'll see. And um, uh, finally, I'm going to give it over to, uh, to my colleague Simba, because I'm not a lawyer, uh, to talk about some of the challenges we've had dealing with local regulators in Zimbabwe. Okay, this uh, good day. I think this goes to show how intelligent Veringa is. He has to be represented by two people. <laughs> um, having come up with the idea that we wanted to have a startup dealing in Bitcoin in Zimbabwe, the first thing that we had to address was what do the laws in Zimbabwe say? There's the general fear that the law would preclude us from being able to operate from the get go. Um, our analysis and uh, our position after a bit of research was that there was actually no specific law that uh, precluded us from operating a, a Bitcoin-based company. And then we took this up with the, with the authorities to say, we have come up with this position. What is your take on Bitcoin? So we engaged the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe and they said, what is Bitcoin? <laughs> They had no idea. So <laughs> I'm a lawyer and trying to understand what blockchain is is already a, a task and a half. And then I have to explain it to the authority. It was interesting. <laughs> but um, we reached an understanding. They're not going to issue out an official position. They have issued out an official position. They just want to see how it goes. And as we are progressing, they want us to help them educate them on what the blockchain is, what are the advantages and everything. So we're in the process of coming up with a working document where we'll share with the Reserve Bank to say this is how we understand the technology and this is how it's going to benefit the country and the like. So we're actually hoping some of you guys will join us in educating the Reserve Bank uh, on what the blockchain is all about. And then the, mo the other issue was Zimbabwe already has um, an interesting position as to explain that we, we, allow, we have a multi-currency system. So one of the way we postulated was we are already having multiple currencies working in the nation. So if we treat Bitcoin as a currency, we're just adding one more, you know, so it's not so bad. <laughs> so so that, that's, that's sort of what we would rather emphasize on at the moment for them to view it as a currency because we are saying it introduces a different way of paying you know it makes things easier um, there are people who actually understand it so let them use it so we can pitch it that way uh, and hopefully the reserve bank will buy it um, the hardest part uh, for us is there are many things that are coming up as the technology is growing and is developing. The other guys who want to deal with remittances um, to then guide the Reserve Bank uh, on all these aspects pro tends to prove uh, a bit difficult because we also have to be a bit selfish and focus on what our business interest is. So one idea we, we have postulated is that maybe we, we work as an industry to you know, reach out to other uh, Bitcoin uh, entities operating in South Africa, in Botswana, and form some form of unit that can then actively lobby or educate so that, you know, it takes out the, the larger responsibility from us uh, as, as, a, as a startup. And then it's a shared responsibility, and then we can actively, you know, conscientize the, the, the authorities. So that's what we've been hoping we can pull off because. We cannot explain maybe how remittances will totally work because that's not really our area of, of, of operation. Um, so the, I think we, our call definitely remains that if, if we can
get our other partners on board to work with us in, in at least developing the educational aspect of it. Uh, it would go a long way because the Reserve Bank doesn't seem to be in a hurry to come up with a, with a position. They have not even commented on what they think Bitcoin, no, they, not, not even a cautionary statement has been issued. So I think we can take advantage of that to you know, advance the knowledge that they have before they, 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 they introduce any regulation. So that's my brief take on it. Great. Sim Thanks, Simba. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, guys. Any questions? Thank you guys for your presentation. Um, when I think of my five years in Zimbabwe, one of the sayings they taught me was, Chisi Chako Masima Mashoma. <laughs> and for those who are sitting here, they don't understand Shana. Um, uh, it means that which is not yours, you don't appreciate. And living in a country like that, where the foreign exchange changes so drastically from day to day, and trying to survive is something quite something because of where people are fleeing the country just to support their families. And the lesson we're going to take from this as South Africans is to watch our rand carefully because as much stability as we think it's stable, it not, might not be so stable as we see decisions and things that the government says and what businesses do as a result. And going the, the route that you guys are doing with Bitcoins is very innovative. And I think we need Thank to start you. teaching our family and friends. I mean, every time then um, a major statement or um, a weekend finance minister comes in and goes out, um, there's a huge potential in making money in Bitcoin. That's all I want to say. Thanks. Or we can stop using the South African brand and just switch to Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Great. Hi. Um, I was just wondering with your exchange in Zimbabwe, uh, what <coughs> fiat currencies do you use for your exchange? Multiple <laughs> fiat currencies. So while we have multiple currencies uh, that are legal tender in Zimbabwe, the US dollar is the most popular one. So we, uh, we just have the US dollar as the fiat currency on Bitcoin funding. Jonathan? So, um, forgive, forgive my ignorance. How, how are the like, USD digital banking uh, set up in, in Zimbabwe so that you can accept USD? And then is it as easy as it is in South Africa, or is that a big challenge to your business, allowing digital transfers of fiat currency? It's uh, actually quite easy. I think it's easier than in South Africa because we've got, uh, we've got mobile money. So uh, I'm, I'm sure you must know EcoCash, the biggest mobile money service in Zimbabwe. It's the second biggest in Africa, so after Kenya's M-Pesa. And I think because we've got mobile money, it's actually even better because it allows you to instantly buy or sell Bitcoin. So, un so, uh, so unlike uh, waiting three days for your uh, bank transfer to clear as you do on Coinbase or these other exchanges, uh, you can do that instantly in Zimbabwe. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Great. Thank you very, very much, guys. Thanks for coming down to South Africa. Thank you.